the Ibrahim Governance Weekend brings together a coalition of organizations and business individuals from across Africa and around the world to have a discussion on proper governance and leadership and also utilization of resources in Africa. Hello, my name is Dana Iriza. This is Business Digest. Let's get into the headlines. Kigali hosts the more Ibrahim Governance Regional culinary competitions come to Kigali. And on the market trend segment, we bring you the consumer price index for the month of March. Now the 2018 Ibrahim Forum is taking place here in Kigali to discuss on public services and how that relates to good leadership and good governance in the continent. Joining us now is Edwin Ikuara, the policy manager of One Campaign based in Nigeria and he's here to discuss on what One Campaign has done across the continent in terms of uh, eradicating poverty. Thank you so much for joining us here. Now please share with us um, a short background on the one campaign for how long has it been running and what has it done so far in when it comes to eradicating poverty in the continent so everything is about poverty eradication at the end of the day because for whatever campaign we do the core of our work the the, the, the people that are at the center of our work is the poorest people is about how do we get them out of poverty so we've done several campaigns in, in Africa particularly we in 2014 we did what we call the do agree campaign and the idea here is that the agricultural sector has the biggest potential to bring most, most people out of poverty. So we basically advocated for African leaders to make agriculture the center of their poverty eradication program in terms of their investment that they put in that, in terms of the number of people it will affect, in terms of the number of um, young people that it can engage in terms of providing employment. So we did that campaign in 2014 and then we, we came out with a very strong declaration from the African Union where the leaders committed to increasing their resources. Particularly in, before then, in 2003, they had committed to making 10% of their budget go into agriculture. But what we saw over time was that very few countries really implemented that. So in, the, in 2014, when we did the campaign, we tried to see them, get them to re-engage on that promise so that more African countries begin to put more resources in agriculture because it has the biggest potential of picking most people out of poverty. Now one thing you've mentioned is insufficient resources, inadequate resources in the continent. What do you think is the root cause to this? Okay, so th that can come from, that can be viewed from many dimensions. Number one, Africa is not, is, the resources are not scarce in terms of, we have natural wealth, minerals and all the things that you can imagine on this continent. We have huge rainforests. We have, yeah, natural wealth is there. But the question is being able to harness this natural wealth to the point where it is available for the government to use them to provide services for its people. So we talk about like tax mobilization, right? When you have a system where 70 to 80 percent of the economy are in the informal sector, they are not, you're not able to tax them. Right? So it becomes very difficult when the tax base is very low, it becomes very difficult to put that resources together to create public services like, you know, uh, infrastructure, um, um, you know, roads, you know, railways, power and all of that, that will empower people to get out of poverty. So that is one. So it's not about a declining resource in that, in that sense. It's about declining resource in the capacity to mobilize, you know, from what you already have. But apart from that, we, you know, like Africa has received a lot of resources from the international development community. But they are also grappling with their own domestic problems right now. So you see AIDS coming towards Africa is declining, right? So we need to also begin to think about how do we harness what we have internally, you know, to make the most of that, to get the best for our citizens. Now, tourism, conservation and development professionals from Rwanda, Congo and Uganda have come together here in Kigali to sample a variety of chef's foods and also network in order to discuss on vital issues that concern the economic development of the region. Have a look at this. Rwanda was brought on board two years ago when the geographical reach of the Gorilla Highlands was expanded in a bid to promote the idea of having young chefs from resorts, safari lodges and hotels come together, start a network, test their skills and create a fellowship of young professionals. Tourism, conservation, development professionals from Rwanda, Uganda and Congo came together in the event where they sampled chefs' food and network as vital matters concerning the region, such as how to best promote the region for the sake of its economic development. 
The panel of judges included representatives from the Rwanda Development Board, Uganda Tourism Board, a representative from Congo, G8 Silver Chef Competition 2017 winner Alan Mukasa, all headed by regional traveler blogger Professor Dr. Wolfgang Tom. Now the Pan-Africa Parliament elections are to be held on the 10th of May in South Africa and joining us now is Honorable MP Mustafa El Dindi who has paid his short visit to Kigali to explain to the State Minister his vision on the Parliament of the Pan-Africa. Thank you so much for joining us sir. Thank you. Now please share with us what are your expectations when it comes to the Pan-Africa Parliament? My expectation is that uh, they've got to admit I will be the president, I will be the next president. Actually. Let us tell our brothers and sisters watching us what the Pan-Africa Parliament is because I don't think that there are a lot of people who know about The Pan-African Parliament is an organ of the AU, African Union. Then it's a very important organ because it's legislative. It's not yet. Now it's over 13 years. It's not yet legislative. For, until now, it is uh, consultative, but we are trying to make it legislative. And I think if I become the president, I think we can reach uh, this goal. I was coming to see the president, president of the African Union, who is the president of Rwanda. Uh, the idea is simple. I'm here to talk about my vision, what we can do, my background, who is an investment, who knows what investment is, and I'm very happy because the president uh, uh, of Rwanda and the president of the AU just launched, just launched uh, the free trade agreement and an extraordinary session. And this is really uh, a big treat, even for the father founders of Africa, to have a free trade agreement between the African countries. We can do it. We can really do it between us. If we have an investment law, one, not a hundred, not fifty laws, not every country you go you have another law. No, we want one law for the investment in Africa between Africans. And to tell him that there is resolution who have been taken in the African Union saying that the rotation should be should be applied. Rotation to give an explanation is that we are Africa is divided into five regions, north, east, west, south, center. And normally the presidency should go on a rotating between the region. Now the north didn't get any presidency, the south didn't get any presidency, the east and the west got it, and the center got it, but the center wanted for the th third time, which is not acceptable. We are in the north seven countries, there are 14 countries, then if we don't use the rotation, who is applied in the African Union, where there is resolution in the African Union saying it's rotation and we need the experience of everybody, that means we will never get to participate. And then it will not be one Africa, one voice. It, 
it will be one Africa central voice. Then the, I came for him because he is the president of the African Union. He has responsibility to be the judge. He is the big man, okay? I came to the big man, I'm telling him, please do something in that. Tell them that they have to respect the rotation, to respect the resolution of the African Union. And uh, I, think, I think they heard me well. When it comes to um, um, the free trade that is being implemented here in Africa, do you think it's going to uh, benefit countries with bigger firms, for instance Nigeria that has oil, and um, the certain countries that don't have such big um, firms and resources? What do you have to say about that? What about the SMEs? Do you think they're, they're going to be lost in this whole free trade uh, implementation? Do you think that countries like Nigeria will benefit more from this? Yes, maybe Nigeria, they got oil, but they don't have what you have here. God is fair. He gives it to everyone something. And that's why we say, let's open the doors to people of the country. You have what they need, and you, they have what you need. And that's why we are talking about the free trade. Of course, the big companies, the multinational companies, are, 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 are a threat when they come to small markets. And, and, but we can work out now with the free trade agreement law that we can protect our babies. Our babies, that mean our companies that succeeded nationally, young men who traveled abroad, who came with knowledge and did projects in their country, this is my aim is to work with these little companies. They are not little, you know, they are $10 million, $20 million local, but we can make them from $10 million to $50 million if we open the market for them. You know, every one of us has something that the other don't have. You have the tropical weather, you have certain products. In the north, we have certain product. In the south, there is certain product. If we open, we can have a table with all the product in African product. We can create clothes to protect. I'm not saying against the, the international uh, uh, laws. No, no, no. We can protect our little companies until they come to the level that they can fight. You cannot leave a kid of five years fighting with a 30 years old. You will kill him. Then we don't want that. That's why I'm, uh, one of my plans, if I become president, is to do gathering and bring these companies to present themselves. From here, from Uganda, from South Africa, from Egypt, from Sudan, from everywhere. Success stories. Success stories in their countries and open for them the market. You know, in Egypt we are 104 million. If you open the market, I can go to 1.3 billion, which is Africa. This is a huge thing. That's why this free trade agreement who was signed, who is not yet applied, when it will be applied by laws everywhere in Africa, the same law, it will change. It will change a lot the life of these companies who are giving jobs for all the young people here. But it's not only a company who is successful. For me, success is that he is paying his taxes, but he is doing his social role. What is your opinion on um, countries that have not participated in the signing of um, the free trade agreement in Africa? What do you think is the cause to that? They will come. They, they, they will come. They will come. When 44 out of 54 sign, that's mean everybody is there. Maybe there is 10 countries who are waiting, need studies. But when they will see the machine running, they will be, you know, like this, this question we have to ask them about, you know, like, but I think there is always the scare. I want to keep my market for myself. This is very narrow thinking. But I'm sure that their population, when they will see the benefit of the 44 country and the success of the 44 country, they will oblige their government to sign because they will sign, found themselves uh, without a market. Uh, they will find themselves away from the free trade agreement and, and I think there is a lot of benefits. I, my vision is, is to unite. We need a revolution of love in this, in this continent, really, you know, that we get united. We need this not only for the free trade agreement, but even for terrorism fight. Even, we, we need to get information between us. We need to get training between us. We need to change experience. 
In Egypt, we are a 150 years old parliament. We have a lot of experience to share with the other, com with the other countries in the continent. Definitely, uh, 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 getting together and, and being united is the power. And that will be our job, to unite, to go to the people. I will move with the parliament to the people. That means when there is a problem somewhere, we will go with the committee responsible about this issue. We will go to the place. We are not going to let other people give us the story. We will go ourselves. This is our job. We are a rich continent. It's unacceptable to be the richest continent in the world and the poorest continent. This is an insult for every African, and this should change, and it will change. All right, thank you so much, Honorable MP, Mr. Mustafa El Gindi, for the empowering um, message and useful information you've shared with us. We hope uh, the people out there, the viewers that are watching, the entire country will be really um, appreciative. All right, you're still watching Business Digest. We still have more to come. Stay with us. And on today's market trends, we'll be looking at Consumer Price Index, the March 2018 edition. The Urban Consumer Price Index will be the focus of the publication as it is the headline index for monetary policy purposes. Looking into the Urban Index, the Urban Consumer Price Index increased by 0.9% on an annual basis and increased by 0.7% on a monthly basis. The annual average rate between March 2018 and March 2017 is 3.2%. And on the Rural Index, the Rural Consumer Price Index decreased by 2.9% on an annual Annual basis and increased by 1.3% on a monthly basis. Overall, Rwanda index, the Rwanda Consumer Price Index decreased by 1.4% on an annual basis and increased by 1.1% on a monthly basis. The Urban Consumer Price Index is calculated based on approximately 1,622 products in 12 urban centers of Rwanda. The Urban Consumer Price Index increased by 0.9% in March 2018 compared to the same month of the previous year. This is mainly due to the rising prices of housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels 2.2% and transport 3.8%. The monthly consumer price index increased by 0.7% in March 2018. This is mainly due to food and non-alcoholic beverages 1.6% and transport 1.6%. The underlying inflation rate, excluding fresh food and energy, increased by 0.2% compared to February 2018 and increased by 1.7% when compared to March 2017. And that's all we have for today's show. Don't forget to tune in again next week at 9 p.m. on Rwanda TV. For more information on this show, please follow the handles you see here below. My name is Dana Iriza. Thank you for watching and goodbye.